W. Gibbons Middle School in Westboro, Massachusetts. It is uh, June 3rd, 2021, and we would like to uh, play a musical pr presentation for you this evening. We have the Gibbons Middle School eighth grade band. They are all interspersed in our audience today, and they are all with their, their COVID masks on, and they are from 10 feet apart, and um, we are very anxious and excited to play for you this evening. A uh, couple of uh, little fun facts about the group. Um, we've probably had maybe three rehearsals uh, to get this program together for you this evening, but we've been meeting with sectionals all through the school year. So this is how we are able to present something for you this evening. We're kind of calling it a presentation because um, we are going to be playing portions and sections of major works that we would otherwise do in school. Um, but because we were lower on rehearsal time this year, uh, we chose a traditional program, but we're just playing sections of the program instead of the whole piece. So we are gonna play three selections for you this evening. Uh, the first piece is called American River Songs by Pierre LaPlante, and we are going to be playing the first section, and it is called Down the River. We're also going to be introducing our fully remote students that are also here with us and they are also participating in our performance this evening. So we have friends here and we have friends at home. So while we are changing to the next piece of music that we're going to play for you this evening, I have a little bit of a story to tell about this selection. So our next selection is one that we perform regularly with the 8th grade band, and it serves as a cross-curricular learning experience between two content areas, band and math. This piece illustrates how standard methods of assessment are not always applicable to all learning experiences. So the name of the piece is called A+, A Precise Prelude and an Excellent March. It's by Thomas C. Duffy. So how would one feel about earning a 99% for a test or a quiz grade? Knowing that a 99% falls into the A plus range in most situations, people would probably agree that this is a very desirable grade. But in a musical ensemble, does this standard still apply? This piece tests this question in a surprising and unexpected way. So you will hear two distinct sections of the same piece of music. The first section will sound like a normal band piece and it will be performed correctly with no errors. That is, it will be at 100% accuracy. Then there will be a brief pause 
Then the second section of the piece will be exactly the same music as the first section you just heard, but instead of it being performed at a 100% accuracy, it will be performed at a 99% accuracy using 1% error, where the students will be playing errors and making mistakes on purpose. That is our favorite part. <laughs> so you will be hearing mistakes that they are supposed to be making on purpose. The students themselves determined how many mistakes each player could make on purpose by completing a short percent math worksheet. They determined that for a 52 member ensemble playing a piece of music that is comprised of 8,665 notes, each player could play a little over one note incorrectly. So we took the band and we divided them in half. Half of the kids got to play two errors on purpose and the other section of the band got to play one error on purpose because it came out as a 1.7, so that was about, about halfway. So let's listen now and learn if playing a piece of music in an ensemble at 99% accurate sounds like it would be okay or not. So we hope you enjoy our recording of A+. accuracy and then a 99% accuracy. So 1% really makes a big difference in a musical ensemble, we think. Uh, before we play our final selection, I'm going to step down and just tune the help with the timpani tuning just for a moment and we will be back with you shortly.
So our final selection this evening is going to be a piece that is called Spy Chase by Brant Carrick. Spy Chase was purchased a few years ago. Um, I purchased it for the intention of performing it at our, our annual Bandorama concert that we usually have in November. Usually that concert is um, designed for more uh, light music, popular music that we use for those purposes. Um, since we didn't have a chance to do Bandorama this year, I thought that Spy Chase would be a wonderful addition to our end of the year um, culminating musical presentation. Um, and again, we're gonna play half of the piece. We won't play it in its entirety. Um, and Spy Chase sounds like remnants of a James Bond movie. So I was very surprised that many of the students knew James Bond and had heard of that name. So as we were rehearsing, they all said, it does sound familiar. It sounds like that type of music. So, so here we are, we're giving our final presentation and it's going to be Spy Chase by Brant Carrick. presentation for you this evening. I would like to um, express to my students how uh, really incredibly proud I am of all of their efforts this year. It has been full of challenges, but it's really been a, a, an interesting learning experience for all of us uh, teachers as well as the students. And um, I would like everybody to wave and say goodbye to all the folks at home. And um, they, they did a, just a wonderful job and they're really a, a just a pleasure to work with. So, um, great job guys. And uh, hope to play for you again soon. So uh, have a good evening everyone, thank you. <laughs>